my name is Jeff Pagano, and welcome to Harping on Rugby, where with the help of some fellow fans, I get the chance to harp on what's going on with Leinster, Ireland, and the wider rugby world. First up, joining me this week is the host of the excellent multi-sport podcast, Post to Post Sport. He's making his 17th pod appearance to go with the host of written contributions over the years. Warm welcome to Mr. Kieran Duffy. Yeah, more of a more of a blog than a podcast these days. A kind of a, we we fluctuate in our phases of what we're doing, but uh, safe to say, harping on rugby is the pro Six Nations Rugby Championship, and we're the European Super Cup second tier competition. And um, also with us is someone earning cap number eleven. Uh, hello to you, Mister Jay Long. Hey Jeff. Hey Karen. Hey Keepin. Thanks for having me back. Welcome. Good to have you. Okay, so now it's finally time to start talking about something good that happened on Saturday. Although first to set the scene, I want to go all the way back to September 2021 on the very first weekend of the very first United Rugby Championship. I was at the Aviva Stadium watching Leinster comfortably dispatch the Bulls by 31 points to three. And with the match decided in the closing stages, I was one of many in the stadium who chose to get on our phones and watch the final few minutes of the Irish women's World Cup qualifier being played at the same time, which is ironically against Scotland. We were 18-13 up as the clock was ticking down, but the Scots got a converted try right at the end to pinch the victory and qualification right out from underneath us. Now, as we all know, since then, there were more dark times to come for the women's game on these shores, as the men had a real purple patch, I might add. But on Saturday afternoon, with almost perfect symmetry, it was a win against Scotland that put the girls through to the 2025 Rugby World Cup to be held in England. I'm going to ask my guests for their thoughts in a bit, but first we'll hear from another contributor, Tom Coleman, who was actually at the Kingspan Stadium and filed this report for us. Hey, Jeff, just sending a little pre post-match report from, from Belfast. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic day up in Belfast here. There's about 7,000 turned up to Kingspan to shout on the girls in green as they tried to get World Cup qualification and a third place finish in the Six Nations after last year's disastrous year. Um, the first half, I suppose, the, the big downpour in, in Belfast, about five minutes into the game, and the in, the, the bad injury to the, the Scottish number nine, uh, who went off after a long break in play, was probably broke up any sort of rhythm that was in the game. In the first half, a sort of Ireland struggle to get their phase play going. And some wayward kicks, um, sort of handing back territory to Scotland, uh, a lot throughout the throughout the first half. Um, we did have a lot of possession towards the end of the second half in that second quarter. Um, huge amount of uh, line out mall play. Um, I thought some super line outs. I thought Nave Jones threw some great line outs. It was Ireland had some really good. Uh, complicated moves that paid off pretty much every time apart from maybe one overthrow just near the end before half time um, and they were unlucky not to, to finish a few of those chances before half time um, I thought the referee was maybe a little bit lax on Scotland were repeatedly offending in and around the, the mall um, as we were trying to get that sort of uh, important score before half time but uh, I think the really the game really kicked to life in the, in the, in the second half uh, Tolo's own Katie Corrigan, who's only 19, I've been lucky enough to see her come up through the ranks at Leinster as, as you know, involved with my own club at youth level and uh, it was fantastic. She looked a bit nervous in the first half, probably obviously would be so, um, like she may be doubting whether she should be at this level but uh, once she got to try, um, I think it just kicked on from there. She was full of confidence, full of running, she ran a lot harder and a lot straighter and started to sc- cause... Um, the Scots some some problems and uh, started to see some of the lot of the play we would have seen at underage level throughout Leinster. Um, I think the girls, uh, the Irish women's team, definitely dominated the second half. Um, I think the Scots, apart from the last couple of minutes when they were trying to get back into the game, they really had only one entry into the 22 and unfortunately we gave away a soft enough try to let Scotland back into the game at a sort of 12-12 draw. Uh, and it was nervous then after that. But... Um, uh, Cleona Maloney, who came on, uh, Railways uh, replacement hooker, who came on for Nave Jones. Um, she had a few dodgy lineouts, but apart from that, I thought her general play, uh, she carried hard and, and added a bit more oomph to the Irish pack badly needed for the last half an hour. Um, I thought Ennis Gorty's own uh, uh, Aoife Wafer was outstanding again. She's just the amount of, you know, she's the Irish version of Quagga Smith, just the amount of rooks and and general play that she gets through, um, she bounces up from her from her from a tackle. She's there for the next the next the next phase immediately. She just gets through some amount of work. Um, absolutely fantastic player and probably Irish Irish player of the tournament for me anyway. Um, 
but we eventually got our just rewards. We got another try from Cleona um, off a lovely move, and um, that really set us up for a grandstand finished. Um, the crowd, you know, a lot of a lot of um, bus loads. Of, you know, there was a lot of bus bus loads outside Raven Hill uh, that had travelled from from all over Ireland. I seen teams from Mullingar and from Terenure and Galway that had travelled up uh, to watch the game, as well as our own club. We twenty five players up at the game, so it was a great occasion. And uh, a great atmosphere to finish off the game. I suppose the most important thing for me was just just seeing delight in the Irish supporters' faces for the girls after their win because, you know, they've, they've made the effort to get up to, to Kingspan for the game. But the absolute joy on, on the Irish team's uh, faces and when the full-time whistle went. You know, if you play any sport at any level, taking a beating like they did in Twickenham, you know, is very, very hard. Nobody wants to have 88 points stuck in you so the amount of work they put in during the week and the relief that they were able to turn down that around with a W and most importantly get World Cup qualification um, was just outstanding and the atmosphere at the end of the game was electric everybody was just uh, you know it was a fantastic fantastic win and really worth the effort to get up to Kingspan for the game um, so after last year sort of hard year it was just brilliant for the girls to to, to, to really you know finish third in the Six Nations Um They'll still be disappointed with a few performances. Maybe the the Italy game they 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 started really well in that game and didn't um didn't put away some chances um and convert it and so the Italy came back into the game, but uh, we do know England and France are, are ahead of the rest. Um, but I think after last year, I think the team just getting together and and putting that sort of effort back in. Um, to finish third and get World Cup qualification and just the joy it, it meant to them. You just see on the pitch how absolutely ecstatic they were. Um, was just was just fantastic. So yeah, this is Tom Coleman, your uh, Harpen on Rugby reporter, signing out from from a very very happy Belfast. Many thanks for that, Tom. Well, Kieran, it was uh, definitely a boost for the women's game that was really needed. Yeah, absolutely was. I mean, I remember. I think you can go back to kind of. 2017 that world cup hosted here in ireland you're thinking you know i think leading into the world cup people who like i'm not i i, I wouldn't have as much knowledge about the women's game as the men's game but i'm thinking look this ireland team won the grand slam in 2013 won the six nations in 2015 has been consistently competitive in the six nations can make an effort to get to the semi-finals here obviously you now this is the old format where it was three groups of four so only the top only the top uh, top teams in each group and the best from rope go through. But you're thinking, look, we'll at least finish second in the group here, have a chance of getting out of the group, and if not, be in the be in the uh, fourth play in the fourth place playoff or whatever, the, or the fifth place playoff. But in the end, to not even qualify automatically for the next World Cup, I remember uh, remember interviewing Jenny Murphy a little while after that, and look, she she made no bones about it. She said it was extremely disappointing and. You know, it was hard to, I think, in fairness, I think a lot of players weren't in a position to talk about what was going on, what was going wrong. Um, but um, it just seemed like there was an awful lot going wrong. Uh, and, you know, the last few years have just been turmoil. And as bad as it was to not automatically qualify for the World Cup, um, it, to not achieve automatic qualification from the World Cup you were hosting for the next World Cup and to not even feature... It's really bad to um to miss out on the next one entirely, and you know you basically Ireland had two chances. I mean, finishing high. Um, sorry, no, we didn't actually. It was it was it was purely based on the playoffs. Uh, but um, you know, you think we lost to Spain, who weren't in the Six Nations. Um, that's something I think might be a bit of an issue, and maybe the Six Nations shouldn't necessarily in the women's game shouldn't necessarily have to follow the men's format because the best teams aren't always going to be the same. But, um, you know, just the nature of going out with a whimper in that, um, in those World Cup qualifiers and just that realisation, hold on, Ireland aren't going to be at a Rugby World Cup. That's like in, in any, in any whether it's men or women, that's unthinkable, that's crazy. Um, and now, and then it was just a slump after that and it seemed like nothing was going to get better. I mean, a um, bit of bit of light then in the WXV, which I think is a great idea for a tournament. I think it's better than the Nations League that's been brought in for the men's, to be honest. And I'd love to see an extended version of it with maybe more teams in each division brought in for the men's to allow for promotion and relegation straight away. 
Um, but the bit of light there, having won the third division in that, still, again, you're thinking, look, Ireland are playing at the third division of a three-tier competition. It's it's still not great. So, um, yeah, look, it took a bit of heroics. It was um, it wasn't a perfect Six Nations by any means. I mean, I think um, you know, from memory, we were fairly we were reasonably okay against France, considering the massive gap in professionalism. Um, and then you know, just absolutely destroyed by England, which um, I don't think actually helps England in the long run. The fact that they seem to be way ahead of everyone else, the Six Nations, um, and maybe again that's something the WXV will uh, help with. But to go from rock bottom and looking like there's no kind of almost like the equivalent of Italy in the men's game, what they've been, where teams like you're saying, they should get relegated and put Spain in there instead. Um, to go from there to finish third. And that was a, that was a, like, like in fairness, the referee wasn't great at times in the game. I think, uh, to put it lightly, I think Scotland got away with an awful lot. But, uh, you know, it's a massive achievement to get into the World Cup. And now we have something to build to to next year. So suddenly any games in the meantime become much more important. Suddenly there's a there's a kind of narrative around them. This is a World Cup warm-up. This is a World Cup build-up. Um, I'm not sure what's happening with the Lions. I, I, I don't love the idea of scrapping the WXV for a short time to bring in a Lions t- team when there's such a gap between England and the other three nations uh, involved. But, um, you know, I think it's just, again, more of a making rugby into a marketable product rather than actually a competitive sport. Um, but, uh, no, yeah, it's massive for Irish rugby in terms of support, but also credit to the players because I think, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not privy to any inside information, but every 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 week for a while, it seemed like we were hearing about a new controversy, a new problem, a new case of the IRFU not being too worried about the women's team. Um, and that's that's a big issue because at the end of the day, you know, sport in general is supposed to be something everyone can enjoy. And at the, like, you know, obviously there was a time where we the women's football World Cup was on last year there, and there was a time that the women that women playing football was outlawed, and it's only at the stage now where you know Irish women's football is getting proper support. It seemed like Irish women's rugby was there a decade ago, winning winning the Six Nations. But then just the IRFU didn't back them and it didn't, it didn't back it up. And as much as the IRFU has been successful for the women's team, for the men's team, and they have been, um, it, it hasn't been successful for the women's team. And that's, a, and that's a failure because at the end of the day, if you're not investing in, in you know, the, like we're, we're, if we're not investing in the women's side of things, we're not investing in half of our game, basically. So it's, it's not good enough. And oftentimes... People can be very dismissive of women's sport, thinking sure that's that's women's sport. This is sport. In reality, it's in reality, it's the same sport, it's the same game, and it's our national team. We need it to be doing well. Um, should mention as well, obviously, Lance obviously probably helped. Um we had the Interpro series and then we had the Celtic Challenge Cup. Uh, not gonna claim the Celtic Challenge Cup was of the best quality. It was obviously difficult because the sides were kind of representational sides. I mean, you had Leinster and Ulster and Connacht and Munster playing. Um, so it, it wasn't the best quality. Hopefully that leads to something like a kind of Celtic League type of thing with Welsh sides, uh, the Irish provinces and um, the uh, Scottish sides probably be more marketable if you just have the provinces on their own as well. Um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully we see some movement there. I mean, it wasn't too long ago Leinster were playing a uh, friendly against I think Harlequins, and we were thinking is this the start of something for a Champions Cup type competition? That seems a long way off now because there's such a gap between England, then to France, then to everyone else. Um, but uh, you know, Ireland have a long way to go to bridge that gap. But yeah, look, getting to the World Cup was massive, and um. You know, now now there's something to work towards, just something tangible to say, look, we're building to have a good performance in the 2025 World Cup. Uh, so and it's only across the water. So plenty of plenty of fans to get over there as well. So yeah, it's uh it's a great victory for Irish rugby and one that's been a long time coming. Yeah, it was really good. I mean, um like compared to last season, you know, obviously finished rock bottom and lost all our games. And um this year they did make changes. They they allowed the they they brought the sevens players back in, the likes of Eve Higgins and um and Baven Parsons. That was a big deal. Uh, Clean and Maloney came back into 
back into the side. Um, so, you know, they, they, they are, they are making the changes. It's kind of slow process. And the, the, the result against England showed just how much, how far we have to go just to reach the standards that the red roses have set for the whole sport across the world. Um, but still, um, the fact that we still finished third in the competition, it was a bit of a shocker earlier in the day when Wales beat Italy, but that opened the door for us. And, uh, they really played well. Like you say, there were some questionable decisions towards the end of the first half in the sense that Scott kept giving away penalties in, uh, and I think they had got two warnings, um, in the, in the, in the, in and around the 22 towards the end of the first half. And they just wouldn't give the card. Now, you know, we were making mistakes and the Scots were getting in for tries and Scots were good as well. Scott said some, really good players their number 12 was really strong in the carry and um you know it was a really tight game throughout but we came out strongly in the second half and um some great defense at the end uh just got the win now what did you make of it jay yeah it's just it's just so refreshing to be able to talk about the women's game in a positive light again um just like just a great new start and, and i suppose it's the people really right it's just a, it was so fitting that it was clean maloney with that kind of scoring that equalizer try in the second half um, like in like the emergence of Eva Wafer, you have people like you know Sam Monaghan there. Um, it's just there's a strong characters that this team can 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 build on now and, and move forward. And yeah, and look, we can compare ourselves to the Red Roses, but I mean, they're in a they're on, you have to walk your own path, right? They're in a different league at the moment, and we just have to accept that. And and as and as and as Karen said, it's kind of we get to play them, we get to we get to you know lay our yardstick out beside them. Uh, and continually reach there. It's like us playing the All Blacks, the men's game playing the All Blacks. Um, all those years where we kind of knew what the result was going to be, but we could see incremental improvements, and it, you know you kind of have to hit your wagon to the to the stars there and work towards it. Um, but yeah, it was it was fantastic, and I suppose that that last defensive set the girls were playing for each other. Um, you know we got a yellow card, but it didn't it didn't phase them. You know to get up to go after that line out. Uh, you know fantastic, just just a great gutsy play. You know display at the end. Um, and, but I suppose in terms of the IRFU sense. You know, it's you know putting it lightly that they've mishandled the women's game for such a long period of time. But hearing some of the whispers from the camp, and I think it was Eva Wafer did an interview during the during the campaign that that she said they felt they felt really well supported by the IRFU at the moment. Now, I, I believe that and take that with a, with a with a much smaller pinch of salt if I heard that from um someone of you know a bit more tenured, I guess, who someone who have maybe spent more time. In both regimes, if 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 I was to use a probably a particularly dark term for, uh, like if if I if I heard you know Sam Monahan come out and say there's been a tangible big difference or 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 you know Linda Judang say that probably would mean a bit more, but I mean a positive is a positive, um and and if away for coming out and saying it, um you know it's not a bad sign, uh but I suppose this is just a first point on a graph, uh you know the 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 WX competition was fantastic but obviously the standard of opposition was. Was was questionable, big step up now with the different with the, with the different one we're going into, but in terms of uh, this is our first point on the graph you know, of of the standard of opposition that we want to be gauged against, um and it was a positive outcome and we do, but this the, the slope of the graph needs to ever increase and the IRFU needs to understand that this is just well done this is page one of this new chapter that we're trying to write for for, for the women's game here in Ireland so but yeah fantastic great to see I was I was in a park screaming we head off um so if there was anybody in in that, that park in kildare that was me um but yeah brilliant uh fantastic delighted uh, and a world cup to look forward to as well so yeah definitely i mean it's it's like you say it's all about the support they're getting behind the scenes and that support needs to go right the way down to club level as well there's a lot going on or a lot not going on at club level that's uh and you know there, there's still a lot of work to do i mean we had the club final in the same weekend as the Six Nations, which was, which is kind of a bit of a disconnect as well. You'd like to think that they're because uh, in in the women's game, the top players do tend to line up for their clubs a lot a lot more, obviously, because the provinces don't play as much. So um, there, there, there might be a little tweaking around to do with the calendar just to get that right, but still. Um, the I think the important thing is that when we get these results, which gets the attention of the fans that are listening to podcasts like this or watching, you know, that, that, that might have tuned in to watch and they'll see the win. 
that's one thing, but then you got to build on it and you got to make sure that the standards are improved for next season. And then when they are ready, when we do get to the World Cup, they're ready for it. You don't just qualify and think the job is done, which I think might have happened in the past when we had such good teams winning Grand Slams and getting to World Cup semifinals, um, you know, about a, a decade or so ago. So it's all about how we bring it forward. But listen, for now, this result has been brilliant and it was a great performance. And um, they, they to pick themselves up after what happened at Twickenham, and uh, and and grind out that result was against a good Scottish team. It can't, you know, it has to be said they've been they've had some good results as well in this competition. It's 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 great. It's great for the women's game, like you say. It's good to have something positive to talk about it for once. And like I say, just hope they build on it. So fingers crossed, and we'll we'll see how they take it forward.